Good morning, Cross Culture Church. Let's stand and let's go before the Lord with joyous praise and adoration for all the blessings, all the great and mighty things that he's done. And let's just to say, Lord God, I thank, thank you for you. being God. Thank you. I thank you for being thank our holy you. father. I thank you, oh Father God, thank for you. being the one who delivers, the one who sets yes, free. Lord. Yes. Oh Lord, the one who answers prayer. Yes. Lord, you are our everything, yes, Lord. Lord God. And we bless you. We give our all to you today, Lord God. Yes. We give everything to you, Father. You are so deserving. You are so deserving, Lord Hallelujah. God, and we bless you with all our hearts in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Persecuted but not abandoned. Let down but not destroyed. I'm, yes, gonna love them to death. His love is everlasting. Though your sorrow may last for a night, his joy comes in the morning. God bless you. Uh, wonderful to see each one of you. We again just thank God for the opportunity to be here, to worship him, to, sh to fellowship as best we can with the brethren, to hear the word of the Lord that we may grow thereby. I pray and I hope that you guys have had a wonderful last week and this weekend. Uh, but it's just good to be together. 
just welcome all of you. And I'd like to take a moment to welcome any guests we may have here in person. And if we do, would you please just raise your hand so that we may see who you are other than our special guest. And for those of you who are so kind to join with us by way of live stream, good morning, welcome to you. Glad to see you. Glad that you've taken the time to be with us. You could have trickled on down to some other spots, but thank you that you decided to worship with us this morning. If you are a guest by, and you're on live stream, would you please allow us to just know who you are by putting a little note in the chat box and just say that you're a guest this morning and maybe tell us where you're from and we would appreciate that. I also want to say hello to those of you who may be out on the parking lot this morning. Hello, good morning, welcome. We see you, at least we see some cars and we, we, we want you to know because you're out there, don't feel like you're disconnected, you are connected and we look forward to it afterwards that we will have an opportunity to greet you. So it's a beautiful day, and we just thank God. Thank you guys, too, so much for your prayers, uh, for my husband and me these last few days. Of course, um, I know you know that we both had brothers who passed within three days apart, and um, they were both uh, stroke victims. And, um, but God is good, God is gracing us uh, through this time. And um, I was down in Albany last, on yesterday for my brother's service and on tomorrow we'll be um, having our service for my brother-in-law, William Cooper. And I uh, just want you guys to know that we appreciate all of your, your love and your support and your prayers during this time. We feel those prayers. So thank you. So I know that all is well with us, but thank you so much. I'm going to ask, um, I won't ask right now. We've got something a little later on for you guys, but we're so glad again to have you. And thank you, praise team, Aaron, love you, bless you. Amen. Thank all of you who are making it possible for us to be here today. Uh, we're following COVID protocols and that kind of thing. So thank all of you for just the Ministry of Health for what you're doing to help make sure that we stay as, as um, safe as possible. And those of you who caused this uh, program to be aired and our service to be comfortable, God bless you. Amen.
I'll just say yes. You lead the way. I'm not afraid of what it means for me to say. This life you gave is not my own. I'm trusting.
reason for my joy. You are the reason for my gratefulness. Because of you, I can rejoice. Because of you, I treasure every breath. I owe this to you for all that you do. To worship you in spirit and in truth, I live my life for you. I give you my heart. I give you my soul. Praise God. Praise God for his grace upon our lives. And I want you to listen closely to what you were saying. You were saying, yes, Lord. A resounding yes. Yes, Lord. Even before the question is asked, we're saying to the Lord, to the affirmative, yes, Lord. But then a part of that message would have to do with surrender. Because when you say yes to the Lord, you can't say yes to him lest you have surrendered your life to him. You see, you can't say, if any resistance on your part, then that will stand in the way. In fact, it would, it would really be a contradiction of the statement of yes. 
But when you say yes to the Lord, you say, Lord, let your will be done. Let your will be done. Your kingdom, listen to the focus, your kingdom come, your rule, your reign, and let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And then the Lord postures us to participate in, in what he is doing. We want to be in a position where we can be a part of what God is doing in this day and in this hour. Lots going on right now. You look at what's happening on the news and things we're reading about and things that we're, uh, we're praying for all of those things. But you see, there is a method in this madness. What is God saying through this? And how can we as the people of God be postured so that God can get the greatest benefit out of our lives? <clears throat> so Father, we pray that even this day as we've come together, that you work your work First of all, in us, as your word is imparted, let your word become life within us so that every part of our being is at a place where we have surrendered our thoughts, our, our ideas, uh, all of our actions, Lord, to you. And then, Lord, use us mightily because in this day you have a word to speak into our lives to bring us to the place, Lord, of, of, of comprehension to a degree but participation to a greater degree. Because Lord, when we don't even know what to do, what to say, or where to go, Lord, you know all things. You're omniscient, you know all things. But not only that, you're omnipotent. You have all power. So we trust you, Lord, that in this day, let your witness come forth strong, strong among your people, that people will know you through, Lord, uh, the witness of your church. So we give you the honor, we give you the praise and glory in Jesus' name, amen. Well, praise God for this, the last Sunday in this particular month of August, and uh, we praise God for all that he's done this month, and this is the first, uh, our first guest speaker uh, since the pandemic, because you think about, now we're talking about over two and a half years, uh, but in this we are happy to have uh, Bishop John Ari, who I, I met some time ago through the, the late Bishop Spires. In fact, I've traveled to his, his, uh, uh, his area, the Ugele, uh, and he has uh, attended school uh, at, at Hebrew College. And some of the things I want to mention concerning him is that he uh, is also, I understand the conference is going on now with uh, Brother Marcerillo, he was uh, attended his school uh, in, in, in Nigeria, Lagos, Nigeria, and he has a heart for pastors. And he served as associate pastor to Bishop Ayo Orich Javar. I may be pronouncing it wrong. Over 10 years, <laughs> we, we had a chance of meeting him too, but he has served as uh, associate there. And he's uh, done tremendous work within the community and he's the founding bishop of Life Christian Center International. His television program is viewed weekly by more than a million viewers on Quest TV and other televised networks across Nigeria. He's uh, praise God since the last time he told us in the back that uh, uh, 12, it's been, I say over 12 years since we've seen each other, but uh, his, he's, uh, his wife, first wife transitioned to be with the Lord, but now he's remarried, and he, he told us he has 10 children because his wife uh, was a widow with six, and he with his four, so he has a large family now, and grandchildren and all, so we praise God. He's happily married to Daryl and Ari. Uh, so we thank God for the man of God who God is using in this hour, and let's open our hearts and our minds as we Receive the word of the Lord through Bishop John Ari from uh, Ugele, uh, Nigeria. Let's receive him. Let's lift up our hands first and give God the glory and worship Him. 
Lord, I test for you. I long to be, I long to be in your presence. My soul will wait, my soul will wait on you. Father, draw me, Father, draw me nearer. Draw me nearer to the beauty of your holy name. I will wait for you. I will wait for you. Almighty God, Almighty God, in the beauty of your holy name. I will worship you, I will worship you, Almighty God, Almighty God, in the beauty of your holy name. Can you put those hands together and give him praise, give him glory. He is worthy, he is glorious, he is mighty. He is our King of kings and Lord of lords. No one like him. And there will never be anyone like him. In him we we'll live and move and have our being. He is our sufficiency. I'm alive because he allowed me to be alive. Many are gone, but I'm still here. I don't know about you. I give him, give him the praise. Come on, come on. Give him the praise. Give him the glory. He is wonderful. He is wonderful. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. You may be seated. I want to first of all thank God for giving me the opportunity to be in your midst. It's not the best to travel at this time, but I have to follow the instruction of the Spirit of God. And when God says go, I go. Amen. Uh, it's a trying time. But I also want to thank the set man of the house, our beloved pastor, Woodrow Walker. I think the third, right? Yeah. Oh, the, the second. All right. Well, you pardon me and forgive me if I miss it. <laughs> and the first lady, always looking younger. <laughs> I salute both of you and everyone present here and uh, our sister who plays on the keyboard. Maybe you could sit there, you know, for now because of me. Because uh, sometime in my ministration, I could start singing. Yeah, so if you can be there, that would be fine. Amen. I bring your greetings from Live Christian Center, from my wife, Dari and Akre and all our children, we love you and we thank you for your love for Africa, especially for Nigeria. Amen. The Lord will bless you. Amen. I didn't hear a good amen. Well, this, the, the last song that the, the ministers of music or musicians sang, expressed, and has preached my message because it's talking about the goodness of the Lord. Everybody say the goodness of the Lord. And that's what we're going to be talking about this morning. Now, many probably understand what the goodness of the Lord is, but they have not tasted it. They have not experienced it. It is one thing for somebody to describe vanilla ice cream to you and you have not tasted it. You don't know how it looks like. But by the time you taste it, you will know the difference between vanilla ice cream and lemon. <laughs> Amen. And the goodness of the Lord is something that we all need to experience and taste. Amen. 
So if you don't mind, go with me in your Bible in uh, Psalm 34, verse 8. Psalm 34, verse 8. If we can put it on the screen, that I will appreciate that. That will help me, you know. Psalm 34, verse 8. But I will go ahead and read. He said, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. Can I hear amen? He said, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Now, there is no doubt about it. You can't argue it. You can't, you know, contend it. You can't, you know, say any other negative thing about it. God is a good God. I say God is a good God. It doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter what you, you know, you have passed through or what happened to you in the past. That does not disqualify God. Even in your trials, in our trials and pain and whatsoever we go through, God shows himself stronger and better and making us to understand that he loves us. Can I hear amen? In the book of Lamentations, chapter 3, you know, from one of the verses there, the Bible said, Jeremiah was writing, he said, it was of the mercy of God. If, if not for the mercy of God, we would have been consumed. He said, we are alive because of the mercy of God. And he went on to say, great is thy faithfulness. Can you lift up your hands this morning and say, Father, I thank you for my life. Come on, come on. Say, I thank you for my life. Because some of us, we are taking life for granted because we feel that we're we, God owes us something. God does not owe you anything. Are you listening to me? And no man owes you anything. So is there anybody here that knows somebody that lost somebody? Now, the, 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 the first lady and our pastor, they just lost their brothers, you know, in the same period, which is painful. Please receive our condolence and be encouraged in God. But that does not make God to be bad. Are you listening to me? God is a good God. There is nobody in this house that has been tried or has gone through more pains and trials than Job. Anybody? When troubles queue up for him. If you read that chapter, and the Bible said he was a righteous man. No, so one would have expected that he would be exempted from trouble. But your being righteous or following God does not exempt you from trouble. Trouble comes to everyone. I say trouble comes to everyone. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver him from them all. And I see God delivering somebody this morning from his troubles, from his trials, because in the name of Jesus, God that you serve will make a way where there have been no way. Can you shout hallelujah, somebody? I say shout hallelujah, somebody. Tell your neighbor God is going to make a way for you where there have been no way. Amen. It looks rough. It looks difficult. But you are going to have your peace. You're going to have your joy. Why? Because of the goodness of God. Tell your neighbor, God is good. All the time. I said, tell your neighbor, God is good. All the time. How do I know that God is a good God? And because I have tested his goodness. I'm telling you. Where people failed, I succeeded. Are you listening to me? Why people are dying, I'm alive. Not because of my goodness, not because I deserve it, but because God loves me and he cares about me. Say hallelujah, somebody. Is there anybody here that can say God loves him, that God has been good to him? Anybody? Yeah, there are people who ask questions, why me, why me, why me? It's because God loves you. Because the trials you go through and the pain you go through, they are designed to build you up. 
They are designed to take you higher. You could choose to be better or choose to be bitter. The choice is up to you. But as for me, no matter what I go through, I will give him glory. The Bible said in all that Job went through, he did not curse God, but glorify God. Can you lift up your hands and say, Father, I thank you for what I've gone through and even what I did not go through. I'm glad I'm alive. I'm glad I'm alive. And because you are in this service, I pronounce over you, you will not die but live to glorify God. I say you will not die but live to glorify God. Whatsoever the enemy has designed to terminate your life or to destroy you, I terminate it in the spirit realm. And I destroy it in the name of Jesus. Because it's written concerning you, no weapon, say no weapon, form against me shall prosper. Add amen to it. I can't hear your amen. Believe God. And how do you taste the goodness of God? I'm running because of time. How do you taste it? I will show you. If, if you are writing, you can write down. The first thing, if you want to taste the goodness of God, is for you to renew your mind. Because some of us, we have wrong mentalities. It will shock you that the most confused religion on earth is Christianity. I'm sorry to say that, but that's the truth. Because one pastor will come and preach a good message and say something very nice. Another one will come another Sunday and say a different thing to counteract it or cancel it. That's confusion. But it's not supposed to be so. We have been taught that poverty will make you closer to God. Well, maybe you're hearing it from me for the first time. There are preachers who are preaching that. That the poorer you are, the holier you become. I don't believe that. I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospereth. That is God's word. Are you listening to me? And God said in Jeremiah 29 verse 11, he said, I know the plan that I have towards you, the plan of good, and to give you a hope and a future. To do you good. Tell your neighbor, God is a good God. Say it, God is a good God. So people come up with all kinds of doctrines that divides, all kinds of things that are destroying the church, and people believe them, you know. I don't know why Christians are so gullible. Huh? Any little, anything you tell them, they believe it. Now, I like the Berean Christians. In Acts chapter 17, the Bible said they went back to the Bible to check and see whether those things that they were taught or preached to were really so. You don't just say amen over everything. Your father is going to die next week. Amen. You are going to have one leg. Amen. You will have accident. Amen. That's a fool answering amen. You don't say amen to everything. You shake it out. Are you listening to me? So renew your mind because the way you think is what will determine where you're going to spend your future. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, you are where you are now because of your thinking, because of your thought. When you change your thought, you can change your life. When you believe right, everything will be right. Yes, I know COVID is real. I know COVID is everywhere, but it will not destroy me. That is my faith. You may be angry about it, but that's my faith. That's what I believe. I know it's there, but I'm not going to have it. And it's not going to kill me. Are you listening to me? Let's not magnify negative things. Let's attack them. Are you listening to me? It will not kill you. You are looking at me. I say it shall not kill you. I like your match. I'm not against it. It's a good thing. I wear it too. But is this the way God created you? 
They, your mother give birth to you with a mask. Talk to me, church. Now, we used to have the whole place filled with people. And now we have to keep a distance, which is okay. That's wisdom. But understand that this is not from God. COVID-19 is not of God. It's of the devil designed to destroy the church, to stop men and women from entering the kingdom of God. How can they hear without a preacher? How can they grow when they don't come to fellowship? How many have internet in their homes? Well, maybe in, Af in, in America, all of you have. But come to Nigeria, even when you mention internet, they will ask you, what did you say? Are you talking about net or, <laughs> you know, something else? So have that understanding. You must renew your mind. Tell your neighbor, renew your mind. Romans chapter 12, verse 2, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. What is it talking about? It said, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Because your mind is very important. That's where the battle goes on. When you hear a word and the... Anybody talking to you about death, 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 death. It gets to a time, if you get used to it, something will tell you you are next in line. I'm telling you. Because negative talking will produce negative life. But when you talk positively, you are going to have a good life. You say, well, is that in the Bible? It's in the Bible. Read your Bible. Hebrews chapter 3, Hebrews chapter 4. The Bible said, and they could not enter into the arrest because of unbelief. How did they get unbelief? They are thinking. They told Moses and Aaron, they said, you will have left us in Egypt. You know, because Egypt is better than the promised land. They have never seen the promised land, but they believed that Egypt was better. Where you are going is better than where you're coming from. Tell your neighbor where you're going, where God is taking you to, is better than where you're coming from. I guarantee you and I prophesy over your life, your best is yet to come. Oh, they are not in church. I say your best is yet to come. I say your best is yet to come. Weeping may endure for a night, but your jaw and my jaw comes in the morning. God will turn things around for the church. I said, God will turn things around for us. Shout amen, somebody. I said, shout hallelujah. I said, shout hallelujah. I said, shout hallelujah. I said, shout, I feel something here. I don't know about you, but I feel something here. I can feel the goodness of God. Shout amen, somebody. Because of time, I can dwell on that for so long because you need to renew your mind. That's where the problem is. Change all your thoughts and the negative ones that were given to you, throw them into the trash can. Are you listening to me? I always tell people, if you don't have any good news for me, don't talk to me. Because I've heard enough about calamities, destruction, accident, killing. Negative talk will produce fear in your heart. And it will cause you to worry. And you start having sleepless nights. And you can't go to bed. And even when you go to bed, you have nightmare. <laughs> and you begin to wonder what's happening and going on. Because of the way you think. Number two, how to taste the goodness of God. Believe you will see that goodness. I say believe that you will see God's goodness. This is one of the verses that have been keeping me all my life. And that is in Psalm 27 verse 13. Psalm 27 verse 13. David said, I have fainted. Unless I have believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Say it after me. I have fainted. All right. This is New King James. Okay. I will have lost heart. That's, can you, do you have the King James? 
I want that word faint. <laughs> yeah. I have fainted unless, say it after me, I have fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. If you believe you are going to die tomorrow, you will die tomorrow. <laughs> if you believe you'll be poor tomorrow, you'll be poor tomorrow. It's according to your faith. It's what you believe. So David said, if I had not believed God to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, I would have been wiped out. Because he went through a lot of trials. Many are they that came against him. Many said to his soul that there is no help for him in God. Then he lifted his hand and said, but thou, O Lord, are a shield for me. My glory, <laughs> my glory, my glory, and the lifter of my head. God will lift your head higher. He will lift you high. Shout hallelujah, somebody. I say shout hallelujah, somebody. Say, I will believe God in the land of the living. I see the goodness of the Lord. Now, churches will be closing down, but not your church. I didn't hear amen. amen. Businesses will be closing down, but not your business. Children will be dying, but not your own children. Oh, they are not hearing me. Because God loves you, and he cares about you. And through him, you will overcome. I say through him, you will overcome. You will taste the goodness of the Lord. Can I hear amen? amen? Finally, number three, receive the goodness of the Lord. It's one thing to renew your mind. It's another to believe it. But it's another to receive it. If I say I'm giving you this microphone and I'm holding on to it, and I'm saying, stretching my hand, and you are not willing to take it from me, you have not received it. And even if you receive it, and you are not putting it to work and using it, it's useless. So what God has given to you is not automatically yours until you possess it. Are you listening to me? So receive the goodness of the Lord. And I pray for this house that the goodness of the Lord will pursue you. We overtake you. We rest on you. Let's stand on our feet. Let's stand on our feet. You say the preaching is so short. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> that's the goodness of God. Amen. I said that's the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. Can the musician come and help me? All my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God come on sing all my life you have been faith well if you know it help me sing it or la la it or oh oh it all my life you have been so Come on. All my life you have been free. For every bread that I have taken up, I will sing of the goodness of God. Well, let's sing the one you know. If it had not been for the Lord, on my side, tell me where would I be? Oh, tell me where, where would I be? Oh, if it had not been for the Lord. On my side, tell me, tell me where. Where would I be? 
Elizabeth, Marsha, and the wife, they were at the airport to pick me up yesterday. And they took me to the restaurant and gave me one of the best food. And while we were eating, he shared his testimony with me about what happened to the wife who was in a coma. And the doctor probably wrote her off and said it was over. But it is not over until God says so. I said it is not over until God says so. You will leave. I say you will leave. And we, Sister, Sister Beth, come, come, come. Run from where you are. Come, come to me. Come to me. You are my message. Come. <laughs> I don't need to preach. Let me use you to preach. You know, that's a miracle walking. Yeah. I said that's a miracle yeah. walking. That's somebody walking in the goodness of God. Listen, it is not because she was good. It's not because she was perfect. It's not because she gave the best offering. It's not because she paid her tithe. But God loves her and God cares about her. And God said, it is not time. You are not going to your grave now. You will leave to carry your great-grandchildren. And so I prophesy over your life that you will see the goodness of the Lord. I say you will taste the goodness of the Lord. Tell somebody, oh, taste and see. Oh, you are not in church. I say, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Thank you. You can go back to your seat. Give the Lord a big clap. Give the Lord a big clap. Listen, it is too late for you to try to convince me that there is no God. It's too late. It's too late for you to convince me that God is not good. I have tasted his goodness. I live in Africa where you don't see electricity maybe the whole month. We live on generator. We just bought one costing us about 11 thousand dollars for the church we have two presently so that if one goes up or go bad we switch on to the other one because you don't expect electricity from the government we have a government i'm sorry to say the leaders we have in nigeria so corrupt that they take the money of, of the country to other countries they call themselves billionaires but you don't see the billions in the, in the land. God will judge them. I said their judgment is coming. Are you hearing me? Corrupt politicians, liars. They tell you they are good. Listen, they awarded the street leading to my house three times. And up till as I'm talking, it has not been tarred. Somebody, every year we award it, they will sign papers in their offices and claiming that it has been done. But when you go there, it's not done. Because both the contractor and the one who awards the contract, they are thieves and robbers. But they will be arrested. And God will judge them. They may be hearing me. I say, God will judge you. <laughs> I'm going to put this on my TV program and let them hear it. Are you listening to me? Why do I stay in Nigeria? If there's another country I would love to live in, it's the United States. But I have a heart for my people. I don't want to put myself first. It's not about me. It's about touching the lives of those that are struggling, who are hopeless, who do not have another meal for another day. They don't think of where, they can't, they can't even imagine where the food is going to come from. Are you listening to me? But they are living. In your own, is there anybody that came to church here without a car? Maybe one or two. Almost all of you have cars. He has been to Africa. Out of 1,000, only one person owns a car. And the car, the kind of car it has, it's already used car. 
poverty at the highest level. It's not that the nation does not have money, but because of the corrupt leaders who are taking the money into their own account and doing different things with them. They just want to get a name. I'm a billionaire. It doesn't work. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to anybody. We're going to help me pray for our nation. Are you listening to me? But in the midst of all what I've just described, God lost me. I say, God lost me. And he's protecting me, providing for me, providing for the church, providing for the family. And we are blessed people. Can I hear amen? amen. I want to appeal to you this morning, I take, took permission from the pastor, that you will help take care of some of our needs in Africa. It's a lot of burden. While I'm here, I'm thinking of how am I going to pay bills? How am I going, not in my house, but for the church. By the time I get home, I need to pay at least $2,000 for our two programs on two television stations. And that's very cheap, $1,000 for one station, just like that. But God has been faithful. Oh, they didn't hear me. I say God has been faithful. Because he called me, he missed my need. Are you listening to me? So I want to appeal to you this morning. We are still in the morning. Whatsoever you can do to help, in the name of Jesus Christ, with the love of God, please do it. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? I am not one of those pastors who will come and lie to you, you know, then you give me money, and I go and live a different lifestyle in Africa or do something else. When I bought this last generator, a member of the church came on the platform and he told the congregation, and he said, one thing I like about our bishop is that when he tells us we're going to do this, he will do it. That's the truth. If you want people to follow you, you have to have some amount, a level of honesty and integrity. Are you listening? I'm not praising myself. But go and find out about me. Come to Ugeli <laughs> or go to, go to Nigeria and you will find out what they will tell you. Are you listening to me? If I want people to fill my church, there are gimmicks. I mean, he knows in Africa, a lot of pastors are even going to, you know, wish doctors and whatsoever to get power to be able to heal people and do, do all kinds of things. But I don't do that. I won't do that. Because if God I serve can't heal you, then forget about it. But I believe God, and I have seen miracles and different things. I'm going to pray for you after this. I want to quickly ask if there are people here that can support us and support our ministry with at least a hundred dollar, you know, between now and next Sunday, you know, I may not be around, but somehow they will find a way to get it across, you know. Are there people like that? If you could raise your hand, I would be happy. Thank you, sister. Anybody? A hundred. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. You can go ahead, write the check in the church name, not in my name. They will serve it. They know how to do it. And I trust him. Amen. I trust him. He loves me. That's why he gave me the mic. If he doesn't love me, he won't allow me to even step at the gate. <laughs> but I'm glad he loves me and he cares about me. Are you happy? All right. Any, any other hand? Let me see all the hands that were raised so that I can know where we are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, thirteen. Any other hand? Can we make it 15? Just two more. Thank you. 14. Where is the last person? 15. It can go more than that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other hand? Oh, thank you. That's 16. Clap your hands and rejoice. I tell my people in, in my local church, when I'm raising money like this, and anybody is frowning or getting angry, 
I say, understand that such a person has a demon. When they talk about the work of God and raising funds for the work, I mean genuine church of God, and you are angry, then you are working against the church. That is the fact. But thank God for you, and the Lord will bless you. I said, the Lord will bless you. I didn't see anybody frowning. I didn't see anybody getting angry. You are all happy people, and the Lord will bless you richly. Is amen so scarce in this church? Can you say amen? amen? All right. What of those who can do 50? You can't do 100, but you can do 50. You can't do 100, but you can do 50. Could you raise your hand, please? Thank you. That's one. That's two. Any other person? That's three. Any other hand? I'm having three. Four. Where is five? All right. You can do 20. You can do 50. You can do 100. And the Lord will bless you. Let's receive your man of God. Thank you, Pastor Woodrow. I don't know how to thank you, but I'm grateful and I appreciate everything about you. Are you listening to me? When you are ready to come to Nigeria again, just call me. I will be ready, okay? If it means hiring a limousine to take you from the airport, we will do that. Give him a very big hand. Give your pastor a very big hand. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Come on. God bless you, instrumentalists. God bless you, musicians. Thank you. Praise God for what he is doing in the body of Christ and among the people of God as we have uh, been challenged and as we hear the word of the Lord and as we continue to pray Let's especially pray for Afghanistan. I told, we talked to Reggie Mackey the other day, and he's working on trying to rescue many of the people that he know personally. There are many that he served with. There are many Af Afghanistans, people from Af Afghans, rather, who he served with. And uh, as a result of serving with them, they became friends. So in that, uh, it's been very difficult to get them out. So just continue to pray for that effort in Afghanistan because it is becoming very, very uh, serious. And we're trusting God that as many as possible can be, can be rescued from Afghanistan. Also, the, the storms that are uh, taking place, we're friends in uh, Louisiana, uh, you know, Fivefold and many others that we know personally there. So let's keep continue to pray concerning what's taking place with the storms that's brooding, that, that this thing can be, that it won't be what has been predicted. We're trusting that God will intervene on that because as much is taking place, we know God is able to preserve and sustain. So Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the challenge. We thank you, Lord, even as we pray and be encouraged in the area of faith to trust you, to trust you in spite of the things that's going on around us. Our focus is not just on these things, but we look at the God who has charge over all things. So Lord, we just pray and we give you the honor and the praise and the glory for who you are. You are Lord. When we say Lord, we are saying that we subject ourselves all together to you. Thank you for the work in Nigeria. And we pray, Lord, that as the ministry of uh, Apostle uh, Pastor Ari continues on, that you'll use, Lord, him mightily, impact, Lord, those that uh, he ministered to. So we give you the honor, we give you the praise, and we give you all the glory. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 As we prepare to give unto the Lord, please, uh, uh, as we provide, as we continue to prepare our tithe and offerings and the special offering, let us uh, be mindful that God uh, is, is posturing us to become the answer to the prayers of those that are seeking him. So, Father, as we give, we just pray, Lord, that you will move upon the hearts of your people, 
that we may respond in faith to the only God that we serve and we believe in and believe on. So thank you for the, gener for, for the generosity of your people. Thank you for all that you're providing. We give you the honor and we give you the praise, Jehovah Jireh, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As you prepare, we understand you prepare. You can leave your offerings in the back. Pastor, let's receive Pastor Greg Johnson as he comes. awesome day. What an awesome day. What an awesome God. He's the Lord of the day. See, that's the thing, because everything he gives is good. Everything God gives is good, and this day is good because God gave it. The Lord has to open our eyes and our hearts so we can recognize that he's showing us the goodness of God. If we receive it, what a good word, man. What a good word. Renew our mind. Believe to see and receive, right? So we're going to prepare to dismiss. We want to acknowledge the, um, the students that came home from um, the New Orleans and Southern Louisiana area. Uh, I believe it's about three or four that are here today. Can you wave your hand so we can see one, two. Oh, I see some, 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 some guests. We love you guys. And we're glad that you were able to come and of all places to be here and to hear a message like this. And we're just gonna believe God for your homes there, your things, friends that are still there. Uh, God is a good God and uh, we don't know how this thing is gonna turn out but we know what the, we what we do know is that the Lord is good. Amen. He doesn't change. So thank you guys for worshiping with us. You could have come home and said, Woo, I'm away from school. I'm gonna chill out and just lay home and sleep. But you came to the house of God. So may the Lord bless you for that. Because I know your parents did not drag you. You made them bring you. And we thank God for you. <laughs> Amen. Let's stand to our feet. Make sure you check around you and make sure that you have all the uh, personal items that you brought with you. And um, remember Pastor Walker on tomorrow uh, as he eulogizes his brother. Yes, and Myron. Absolutely. Myron and Pastor. Um, I think the service is at 3 o'clock tomorrow at Levitt on uh, Flat Shoals. And, um, and as Sister Fran mentioned, she came back last night from driving down to South Florida, South Georgia for her brother's home going. So it's a lot of challenge going on right now, but God is good. That's what we have to hold on to. Now, can I tell you, you can't find, it's hard to find that when stuff start going crazy. That's what you have to get established in your heart now, that when things seem to be relatively at peace, we need a word like this because challenge is going to come. But when it comes, man, how about having your soul anchored? Because we receive the word of God and we are prepared to, to trust him through, trust him through it. So let's, let's, let's get right. I wish we could just hold hands across the aisles. We can't do that. But in your hearts, can you link up with everybody in here? And Father, we just come before you today. We thank you for your word. Thank you for the fellowship of the saints, Lord God. Thank you for just your presence being with us. We don't take it for granted. And we ask you to be with all of those that's going through challenge right now, whether it's loss of a loved one, lift up um, all those families that have uh, had funerals this past week. Lord God, I just ask you to be with them and be with Pastor and Myron on tomorrow. And we just ask, Lord, that you would just cover, 
cover us in the name of Jesus. We pray for all of the students that are here and loved ones and family and friends in this in that Louisiana, um, that, that Gulf Coast area where the storm is predicted to hit, ask you to be there covering in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we just ask that you would be with every one of us. They know the storm is coming in, but we don't know what storms might be coming in our life today or tomorrow, but we know who holds today, who holds our tomorrow. Lord, and we put our trust in you. We put our confidence in you. Be with us as we leave this place. Cover us, Lord, your grace to go before us um, to whatever destinations we are headed, Lord. And we just thank you for being God in our lives. Lord, we love you so much. We can't say it enough, Lord. We love you. We love you. We love you. We love you with all of our heart, Lord. And, and we're learning to love you more. We're learning to love you more. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be directed by the uh, ushers as they guide us in our exit. And uh, let's fellowship on the park a lot a little bit.